What is up guys, 70 Savage here, bringing you another video. Today we are going to be starting the kitchen galley unit. Now this kitchen galley unit is gonna be jam packed full of features like everything else in the van needs to be. It's gonna have a slide out drawer for the fridge. It's gonna have a couple of storage drawers. It's going to contain our 15 inch Rivati sink. Um, and this video is gonna be a little bit more technical than the last one, just to kind of give you guys a better idea of how I actually went about making this thing. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. The cabinet is made out of two main materials. Uh, the first one is half inch birch. I use that for all of the panels and all of the exterior facing faces. I also used pine one by threes to frame out the entire inside of the cabinet. The whole idea of this cabinet is to have something that's A, very light and B, very strong. Um, if you use three quarter inch plywood everywhere, like most cabinet makers do, that's going to be a pretty heavy unit. Uh, using half inch plywood everywhere while only framing out um, the structural portions with the pine one by threes allows you to have a lightweight design that's also very strong. So the very first step that we need to do in order to start building this cabinet is start building the frame. The frame, which is made out of pine one by threes, um, are connected using pocket hole joinery. So to be able to do the pocket hole joinery that I'm doing on all of the uh, pine one by threes and pine slats in general, you're going to need this Craig pocket hole jig. Um, you can find this thing on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. But essentially the kit, the Craig jig kit includes uh, the clamp that goes on this thing to drill your pocket holes. Um, it also comes with the drill bit for the pocket holes and a drill bit for um, putting the screws into the pocket holes. And then you also have to buy this clamp that comes separate, um, which helps you get the first screw into the pocket holes in a, in a set that you're doing. So um, you guys will see me using these tools throughout, but this is how you make these pocket holes with ease. All right, so making a pocket hole is super simple. The first step is using uh, a couple of the pieces of the jig here, the actual jig itself, the clamp for the jig, and then the uh, drill bit to do step one. So we're essentially gonna drill the pocket holes now. And then when you take the clamp off with the jig, you've got yourself some pocket holes. So now you can affix this piece to anything over here with a really strong connection. All right, so this clamp here is the second clamp that you have to purchase separately. And it allows you to set the first screw in a pocket hole that you've drilled. So once you've got your piece clamped and uh, nice and lined up on all three sides, I guess, um, you wanna put the other bit into your drill for the screws and then get a pocket hole screw for the correct size. There's actually a chart uh, that I'll put on the screen right here that gives you a reference for what size pocket hole screws to buy. Um, and you put your pocket hole screw in the pocket hole and you simply screw it in. All right guys, so now that I've taught you how to make pocket holes, let's go ahead and use them to create the frame for our galley. Something you do not want to get lazy about is uh, coming back into the van and test fitting what you've built. Um, I came back in here and test fitted this just now for the first time. It looks pretty good. The length is pretty much perfect. Um, after I put my half inch on both sides, it's going to go edge to edge. But front to back, uh, I definitely made it a bit too big here. It doesn't need to be this wide. And uh, doing some calculations with how big my butcher block is, etc. I have opted to pull these guys out and replace them with uh, uh, slightly shorter ones. So back to the hardware store, gonna get some more materials and keep cranking on this guy. All right, so once you've got your frame, um, it's time to go ahead and start cutting your sheet products. So you can really use any tool of choice. Um, a lot of people prefer using a table saw. Um, I personally prefer using a combination of uh, a handheld circular saw and a jigsaw. Um, I use the, the circular saw in combination with a straight edge and a clamp to make really nice straight edges. Um, and I really like how this blade finishes on plywood. It doesn't uh, bring the edges up too much. It's a really clean cut. So use whatever you want, but these are what I choose to use. And I'll put a link to these two tools in the description below. Right, so the next step is obviously screwing the uh, faces that you cut out into the frame. Now you want to be cognizant here not to screw from the outside in so that you obviously won't see the backs of the screw heads. 
Um, sometimes it feels unavoidable, but with a combination of pocket holes and extra long screws from the inside, you can usually accomplish that. You also want to drill a pilot hole before you screw any wood screws in there. Um, that will prevent the wood from cracking. All right, we got ourselves a fridge drawer. Full on sliding action. I put it on 250 pound drawer slides, so uh, hopefully that's enough. So I'm using these soft hinges on all of the doors throughout the van. Um, they're pretty easy to install and they work super well. So you essentially start out by just drilling a couple of pilot holes um, that are the same width as the template that they give you for the soft hinge. And then you go back over them with the router and uh, make a nice little trench for the hinge to fit into. So now we've got ourselves a nice hole that we can just put our hinge into and it's perfectly flush. Very simple to do. These things are really strong and they work really well. All right, there we go. We routed both sides. Oh, no, that's not supposed to happen. All right, we routed both sides and now we have ourselves a door. Behind me here, I have all of the pieces for the kitchen galley cabinet. I'm about to apply some of this here uh, water-based polyurethane to all of the internal faces of the cabinet. Let's see how it goes. All of the inside faces are now sealed with polyurethane. And I did three coats. Um, it's probably pretty hard to see on camera, but it's a bit shinier on the inside, uh, slightly, and you can definitely feel it. Pretty excited with how it turned out. I guess that you can see the glare a little bit. It's just a little bit shinier and it feels a bit more durable. Now it is time to move on to the priming of the external surfaces before I paint them. Uh, I'm using this Zinser 123 General Purpose Primer. All right, cabinets are primed, they're looking good, and they are ready for the coat of paint. Um, I used this stuff last time, it's called Valspar Optimus, and it worked awesome on the previous cabinet, so I'm gonna use the same stuff here. Um, let's go ahead and get cracking. All right guys, pretty exciting step here. Uh, we got our butcher block in. The butcher block I got is a uh, walnut butcher block from Home Depot. We just marked it up to the correct dimensions and we are gonna go ahead and cut it. Uh, so wish me luck, the mistake here is very expensive and uh, hopefully everything goes smoothly. All right, mission accomplished. We cut the butcher block out, we cut a hole for the sink, the sink fits well, pretty stoked. Let's get to staying in this thing. All right guys, here we are with the finished butcher block. It's looking pretty dang good. Um, this is it compared to the unfinished version before I put any of the water locks on here. And this is simply just a water lock finish. So I did seven coats of water locks um, over a week and this one has nothing on it at all. Here we are. The butcher block is finally placed on top of the galley unit here and the galley is complete. Um, I've actually also bolted it to the back of the van using some plus nuts into this uh, rib right here. And so it's in there super sturdy right now. Um, I'm still gonna bolt it to the floor when time allows. Anywho, uh, it's looking awesome. The butcher block came out really nice. Uh, it looks super shiny. It's a semi-gloss. Um, it's actually not coated in any plastic or anything. It's just the tongue oil, that water locks tongue oil. Um, that I showed you guys in the previous clip. Um, this here is a Ruvati sink. I will paste a link to that in the description below. Uh, it's a really high quality stainless steel sink. It comes with some accessories like this uh, little cutting board piece and um, some cooking utensils, etc. So the final step here for polishing this cabinet was adding the latches and the handles. I decided to go with black uh, hardware everywhere to keep it consistent throughout the van. Um, and for latches, I primarily went with Southco latches. These are five pound latches in some spots and 10 pound in other spots. Um, I put five pound on all three of these guys. And then this drawer uh, for the fridge here has a Southco push button, so you need two hands to do it. 
and you have to push the button in and pull the fridge out in order to release the drawer. Um, that will keep everything closed while driving so nothing flies open and sprays on the inside of the van. And overall, I think it came out looking pretty good. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys like the galley unit as much as I do. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss any future updates to the van. Um, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.